Josh Sanders, welcome to The Real Build. How you doing today, man? <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. Yeah, it's great to have you. Obviously, you we were talking about this before the show. You are in a niche space that I really want to touch on. That is handyman service. And you guys are very important because me being on the building end, I don't know how many times I'm asked, do you know a handyman that we can use to do this or do a smaller project? And I know that's what you specialize in too. So before we get into that, let's talk about your background a little bit. Who is Josh Sanders? That's a, a such a loaded question. <laughs> I've uh, gotten that, that response before. Yeah, it's a loaded question because um, I think I feel like finally in the past two years that I've kind of found who I am because um, and I even talked about this on a on another podcast. It's crazy to say I'm almost twenty years in to figuring out professional world, who I am, what I'm gifted at, and almost twenty years of sales experience, which is just nuts. Everything from lows in flooring as a stupid teenager. Um, and all the way to, I was a lifeguard, Chick-fil-A. I was a worship pastor. I led the music at a church and then into construction. Um, it's, it's been a journey and I think I finally found out who I am. So really right now, if you ask my friends who Josh Sanders is, I'm an introvert. <laughs> I family guy. I would prefer to be on some Island somewhere with my wife and my two boys and never see another person. I'm good with that. Um, <laughs> uh, but even further than that right now i'm finding like i love the handyman business i love building a business which is I, i've i don't know i found more joy in that than i have ever found in anything so building things as far as teams systems processes love that kind of stuff um and so yeah it, it's just been a process that's that's who i am i think I've, i'm a builder uh, i build i want to build people so even though i'm at I'm running Sanders and Sons Handyman now. I'm also a part of WinRate Consulting and running the events that we have for our clients at those. And in that, I'm not directly coaching people, but I get to build and affect their lives and their businesses in that. And there's so much joy for me in building other people and other things like that. So really for me, I think it's it's running my business, being a family man, and then helping encourage and provide value to other people right now. I love it, man. I mean, it's going off of what you started with working at Lowe's, Chick-fil-A and all those other jobs. I mean, we've been there. We've all been there. Everybody I, I worked, uh, yeah, I was a bagger at Publix. I worked on the beach at a Marriott. Like, you know, now we're now I'm where I'm at, you know, building mm -hmm. houses and kind of continuing that family business and that family legacy that we had with our construction company, too. Um you know, let's, let's talk about what you're doing. You said builder of people, obviously, and you had your, you had a, your church background too, and, and so on. How does that relate to where you're at today? As far as, you know, a builder of people and, and with win rate and being a part of that, um, you know, I, I, Mike was on my podcast and, and I know him really well too. And, and he's an awesome guy and doing great things as well. So how are, how are the, how has your past really kind of contributed towards where you're at today? Uh, it's funny. My past was some of the struggle that I went through. I was like, man, I've got all of this crazy media in my head. It was mediocre experience, Chick-fil-A. <laughs> great god bless it it's amazing food great company, um, and, yeah. <laughs> and lows and all of that stuff um here recently i'm finding that that has given me that wide range of experience um even i struggled with being in like i went to seminary for my master's and like how does that apply now but what it's done is given me a wide range of experience um and what i would call in the most humble way i can say it, it's given me some wisdom in different areas of life to help speak into people's uh, lives and businesses. And so specifically, um, and let's say for my business right now, Sanders and Sons, I fully believe what Jocko Willing says in his uh, in uh, extreme ownership, there are no bad teams, there are only bad leaders. I take that very seriously. Um, and so everyone who comes into Sanders and Sons, I'm not hiring a stud, I'm not hiring tens, I'm, we're, we're training tens. We're raising those people up or we're not hiring those A players or we're, we're hiring B and C players and then bringing them up to speed um, because there are no bad teams. There are only bad leaders. Um, and so we, I see that in handyman and it's also easier to do that because guys who are A players are, they've got their own business right now or they're, they're doing really well for themselves. Um, so 
we're building people. Um, we'll probably talk about this later. We're family owned and I want mm-hmm. my employees to feel that family atmosphere. So we really, we really push that in. We, we tell everybody you're an adopted Sanders. Uh, if they're not a Sanders on my team, and we really want to build them, not just professionally, but personally, like how, like I want you to have a good family life. I, don't be afraid to talk to me about things if you're struggling. Um, and then with other businesses, the same way I know um, being in another construction business and seeing what it took to build it. And then even trying to start my own, there are things that I can look back and say, man, I wish somebody would have told me that, or I wish there would have been a great resource for that. And so what we're doing now is we're working on a, an extra page on Sanders and Sons website where it's free resources for the trades, specifically any handyman, plumbers, electricians wanting to start their own business with, okay, here's how you get your business license. Here's how you get, here's what you need to do for taxes. Here's this that you need to file. Here's this resource. We're just trying to make it a lot easier because there's no reason to be in competition. There's so much business right now that we can really help each other out. And so I think, I think it really helps even your, even yours in, in real estate and bigger construction, the more that we can help each other out and provide value and genuinely care for people and build other people up it fixes this stigma with contractors in the construction industry, whether it's handyman plumbers or all up all the way up to commercial. I love that. And I mean, obviously your past experiences too, you and I were talking about it prior to the show too, of where you worked and what you went through and so on too, obviously dealing with those businesses that you were involved with and getting out of them and seeing how something bad was ran um, has taken you to where you are with, you know, with Sanders and Sons right now and being able to kind of turn your business into something even better and more special and, and kind of build upon it too. Let's reflect on that because obviously you've been, you were involved with a situation that we were talking about too. And that's, you got out of it and thank Mm -hmm. God you did too, uh, because you know, you, you're, better than that. And obviously that's going to reflect on your current business today. So let's talk Mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. Um, it was, it was actually a fairly easy decision. Um, because I mean, obviously I I'm a Christian and I follow what the Bible says about integrity, uh, being honest, uh, and doing things the right way and to the best of your ability. Um, and so when I saw corners being cut, uh, lies, lack of integrity yeah. there. It was, it was pretty easy to, to jump out of that. And, um, even the reason I started a handyman business instead of GC or whatever is my dad, you got to give credit where credit is due. My dad was always that guy, the husband, brother, cousin, grandson, neighbor that everyone called when something broke in their house and he would do it. Well, that took it a step further. Um, you hear people in our, our line of work all the time say that you can't offend them because they used to do construction with their dad and their dad was so mean. That wasn't my dad. He took me and my brothers along with him and was very patient and taught us things. One of my earliest memories was 12 years old. One of our friends bought a warehouse. I think I said this on one of the other podcasts and he wanted to build a gym and that's where I learned plumbing, drywall framing, and dad was gentle and really taught us that. And so when the time came to make a decision based upon integrity, I was like, this is easy. There's so much need for the smaller jobs in our area. Uh, and that's something I can do well with honesty, with integrity, and really take care of people. And you learn that Chick-fil-A, they, I mean, they're one, it's a great organization. And they talk about it's always customer focused. You're taking care of your customers well. Um, And then, of course, you know, in the church world, your number one job is to help change people's lives. Um, And so we can I can take all of that, even working for a company that was lacking some integrity there and move that over into Sanders and Sons now and say proudly, man, we've learned from those past, whether it was a bad experience or a good experience. And now we're pulling all together. And we're providing value. We're changing people's lives. Maybe not in the way that you normally talk about changing people's lives, but when you do a small job like that, they love it. 
Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, you're, you guys are so important as handyman too, because I get asked frequently all the time, do you know a good handyman service too? Mm -hmm. And going back on what you talked about too, it's just, we need more integrity in the construction business in general. And there's just so many just bad, I mean, and not everybody, but there's just a lot and you see it, especially in like times today, you know, where things are busy, a lot of people get taken advantage of. And and I'm seeing it, it's almost like a repetitive thing. I've seen it in the past. Now I'm seeing it again. And these builders come around and I say they rob Peter, pay Paul. They're the lowest price. You don't understand how they're doing it for that price, but they owe these people still go to them. They don't learn their lesson. I've had customers that they got screwed over before and they they came to us because they know we have a good reputation but they ended up going to another bad builder because the price was cheaper and they just couldn't comprehend why we were more you get what you pay for overall i preach that on this show so if you're listening and you're looking just that price that's the wrong thing and go check out past episodes because i could talk about that all day probably about 100 times so look at my look at my face right now i am 100 <laughs> agreeing yes yeah, it's it's crazy man and and you're seeing it now too and i see builders now that are taking on I don't even know how they're handling, you know, 60, 70 projects at once. It's like 60 projects at once. And I just don't even know how you can sustain that on top of take care of your clients on top of a four, but it's let's take the draw from the front and pay for the back, you know, or take the draw from the back and pay for the house on the front to finish that house. And it's going to happen where the last person is always going to get burnt down the road. And I preach on this all the time because I've seen it, but people don't learn and it's unfortunate. And that's how they get a bad taste for construction, you know, contractors right there. And yeah. And I have to break that mold. You have to break that mold too. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're here today. Absolutely. But Dude, go ahead. I was to say, I mean, it, I don't think it really matters what, how big the job is. People are always trying to choose the the lowest price we i have those conversations daily weekly with people who are always like well you know joe schmo down the street said you should be able to do it for this much money and it's one of those where you're trying to teach and teach value and what it takes and sometimes i sometimes i respectfully have to say i'm i i'm sorry but we're gonna have to respectfully pull out of this one and yeah uh sometimes my initial reaction is like yeah it's okay call me when you want us to fix their mistakes <laughs> but uh, don't, don't say that's not good customer service i've i've yeah i agree with you too because I, I just know like i've had to hold myself back from saying at certain times uh you know okay well good luck with that you'll probably be calling us when the house isn't finished or there's mm -hmm. issue, you know or you'll be asking me for who's a good remodel guy uh, i've talked to remodel guys that in our area that are like yeah i love this specific these specific builders because we're guaranteed to go to their jobs after the house is done mm -hmm. that's horrible <laughs> yep yep so yep. it's it's crazy yeah we we actually have one uh We've, for some reason, we've done several of the bathrooms, but we know of one tile guy who's been putting tile down over particle board uh, in the area. And so, <laughs> so we're always like, yep, we know who did this one. Yeah. Yeah. It's, there's some, it's just, yeah, we can go on for hours on that topic. <laughs> Let's talk about, um, you know, why, obviously you said there's more need for somebody to take care of smaller jobs. So that was one of the main reasons you chose to be a, a handyman. Let's touch on this. So what are your, why did that your company start and family business? We'll get into that next. Yeah. Uh, so uh, again, loaded question. I, I honestly have to say the biggest reason we got into handyman was because of my dad. Like that was just what he was known for. Um, and then which trickles down into I've been in the construction world. I've seen the issues that wasn't just with a previous company. It's it's uh, industry wide with lack of trust, sometimes lack of integrity, lack of quality. Um, and that's one thing I said, you, could, you know, this is something that we can easily walk into and change. We can change the face of that. Um, and so those are two big things. It was, it was really dad. And then. Um, we started, unlike a lot of companies, there were no investors, 
no business loan. I didn't sell another business to start this one. We started with zero capital and it was me and dad for the first two months, just getting the name out there and fixing things really quickly. And so smaller jobs like handyman jobs, it's a lot easier and quicker to turn over with cash flow. It's really, it's just one-on-one we're going back and forth. So it's easy to build up the cash flow to start building our team a little bit more. So that was another reason for starting handyman. Um, and then it's some of it's my personality. I am ADD and get bored of things really, really quickly. And so I've been a part of kitchens um, and bigger that take two to three months and that drives me nuts. Um, and so part of what we want to do is we want to change uh, the face of kind of customer service and we want to start small. Part of it is the longer you're in a customer's house, the easier they're going to get frustrated with you, the quicker they're going to get tired of you invading their space because ultimately you are, you're a stranger invading their space. Mm. We're starting small and doing quick jobs, doing it really well, um, and then getting out. And then of course they'll call us later and they trust us at that point. And then we can move up the line of bigger jobs, but really for us, it was just start small and we'll work our way up into things and do things with the right cash flow, with the right budgets, with the right integrity and mindset, starting small. It, it always, it, it always seems wise to do that. I was even reading uh, David Goggins book, uh, you can't hurt me. And he talks mm -hmm. about all the biggest fires start with a small spark. Um, even like a rocket, a rocket starts with a small spark and then grows into this propulsion unit. We're going to start small and we'll work up into something bigger. So when you say work up into something bigger, are you thinking about future remodeling jobs or building custom homes? What are you thinking? Are you going to kind of stay in the lane you're in? I, I we'll, we'll most likely stay in the lane we're in. Of course, you never know what, what can happen, you know, five, 10 years down the road. Yeah. But right now, um, we want, we don't want to be the guy that's mediocre at a hundred different things. We want to be really, really good at the few things that we do. So I, when I say um, bigger things, I'm thinking commercial um, service contracts with hotels, commercial buildings, hospitals, that kind of stuff that need, um, I mean, uh, for lack of a better term, they need respectable, uh, professional looking people to come in and do these, do these jobs for them. And so when I say bigger, that's probably where we'll end up, uh, end up going in the next five years. I got respect for that because I, I see it all the time. I mean, obviously we stay in our lane as far as a custom home builder. That's our specialty, new construction. We just stay there. We don't do remodels. I don't touch mm -hmm. condos. I don't, we've been asked multiple times, could have made money doing it, but even home renovations, we don't do. And I've been, email, I don't know how many referrals I've given out to some local guys yeah. too. It, it's just, we know what we're good at. We know what we specialize in and it keeps the focus there too. Cause so many times you see different uh, companies that are, you know, remodelers be becoming builders and it just doesn't work out because they're, they're they are completely different things. They're not mm -hmm. the same, you know, and you see these guys kind of branching out and then they get into these big homes and, and so on trying to do them and it just turns into a mess and that's where they kind of squash their reputation of who they are so i think it's very smart mm -hmm. what you're doing absolutely i mean it's one of, one of two things happen you either fail or you end up not serving your customer base really really well and that's never going to be a part of what we do so yeah completely yeah. agree love that love that let's talk about uh services you, you guys are providing like just so people know like what mm -hmm. services do handyman actually provide obviously you may be different than some other ones but what are you doing yeah so we are probably different from most guys here in east tennessee uh, but specifically the biggest jobs that we do are bathroom remodels um obviously we were talking earlier we we took over some jobs from uh my previous employer trying to fix what was left behind and so those are really the biggest jobs we've done one was a basement um, one was a two room remodel and those took forever. Um, but those are the biggest ones. So right now, Sanders Sons Handyman, the biggest thing we do is bathrooms. Uh, even the biggest job that we've taken in bathrooms is a 250 square foot master bathroom, which is nuts. I, I can't believe there's a bathroom that big. That just blows my mind. And then smaller. So what we define as handyman is a job that takes eight hours or less 
to, to finish. Um, and so that, I mean, right now that's everything from, we built a massive 1200 pound play set, uh, to get ready for spring here recently, uh, install thermostats, um, a set furniture assembly, drywall patching, painting, uh, you name it. If it's, if it mailboxes, those are starting to come in a lot because apparently people can't drive and are knocking people's mailboxes over constantly. Um, anything that you, that you just, you could probably do yourself but you want it done well, or you just don't have the time for that's us. You, you call us and we'll, we'll jump into that. Yeah. And it's like you said, the little things that do matter too. It's just because a lot of people like for us, you know, we don't do the mailboxes. We don't do the towel racks and then the mm -hmm. toilet paper holders. And they always ask, well, who can we hire to do that? You know, and, and just the small things is a lot of stuff we don't take care of, like draperies, stuff like that. We just focus on the house, the initial project and making that as the best we possibly can. And it's just part of that's part of staying in your lane and knowing yeah. what you do. A lot of our business comes from inspectors and realtors. Those are yeah. our two. Those are our two big referrals right now, because, listen, I'm not touching a foundation. I'm calling somebody like you who needs to build a, who can build a foundation or start something from the very beginning. Hey, we, that's not us. We'll hang towel racks all day long. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll knock that out. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So one thing I want to touch on too, because it said this on your website, our handyman servers, our handyman and remodeling services might be varied, but they all come with the same promise of quality, dedication, and durability. Let's touch on this too, because I'm big on quality. I'm big on making sure everything is durable mm -hmm. and the dedication part. Obviously, I love that as well. So let's talk about that. Yeah, I think it's it's multifaceted um, with that. So quality. I'll start with quality. Um, I've told all my guys and specifically my dad. So dad has a full-time job at a, a local uh, company here. So he works, he does shift work. So he only works for us on his days off there. And he's actually come to me before and be like, oh, I'm sorry, is this is a little bit slower. I'm like, I don't care. We tell our customers up front, we're not going to be the fastest, but we're going to do it right every time. We're not going to cut, cut corners. We're going to do it right. And we may be slower to do that, but we're going to do it right every time, every time. So it's not, it's, it's craftsmanship. We're going to do it right. We're going to do it well. If it's not right and the customer does not approve of it, we're going to fix it. We're going to make it right. But the second one, as far as quality and professionalism is concerned as well, we look different than the other guys in this area. Uh, I, we have the right shirts. So they either wear a t-shirt that does, that's not dirty and hold up. It's got Sanders and Sons on it. Uh, we also I have one guy. Uh, he's the only Sanders or non-Sanders employee. Um, he likes to wear polos. So he wears polos and khakis on every job, whether he's putting thin set down or just overseeing a job. So that quality and professionalism both, like we want to look different when we come in, no matter what job it is, whether we're hauling off trash or just overseeing something. We're going to look different. We're going to provide a different product. And then in the end, we guarantee our, our work and they've got a whole one year warranty after that. So if they find anything wrong or something falls apart, which it's not going to happen, but if it does, we want to give them reassurance. We'll come in and we're going to fix it. So touching on, you said do things right, obviously, and, and then the warranty as well. Obviously, you went through that experience with your last company where they weren't coming back. So you know, obviously, a lot of people, you know, one of their main issues with contractors in general is, are they going to come back? Do I trust this guy? Is he just going to take a deposit and run? You know, how, how can I trust this person? Um, you know, because some of them might have been screwed over some way, somehow before. So how, you know, how do you know someone will come back? How do you, how do, how me as the customer uh, speaking for them, how can I trust you in your company that you're going to do the job correctly with no issues and come back? What should people look for on that side of things? I think uh, that's a multifaceted answer. Um, and go one, ahead and give it. Here we go. We're going, <laughs> we're going at it. Um, I think one, there's, there's one part of it where you just have to, you're going to have to trust them. You, yeah. you got to trust who you're talking to, but 
you can do your due diligence in that. Don't just blindly trust somebody. Yeah. Um, uh, for, for example, I, this is one thing I rant on a little bit. Um, people always ask for references and I have to tell them that's, that's really what reviews are for mm -hmm. because you can, I can go to all of my previous customers who will give us raving five-star reviews, but they don't want their information given out to other people for them to call or email them. I have a few that may do that, but most of the time it's not. So you're going to have to trust one of their reviews. You're going to have to look at previous projects and what, what those customers said. So that right there can build your trust. I think as a customer, you should ask the question, ask them, what, what assurance do I have that you are coming back to this job? So for us, it's easy. I think it's on our website. We tell it's on our, it's on our contracts and we tell, verbally tell the customer. So specifically for our bathrooms, handyman projects, <clears throat> that's easy. We're at their house until it's done. Clearly, if you're not, that's kind of crazy. Eight hours or less for our bathroom jobs. We do not. We have a policy. We do not pull guys off of one job to go start another job or fix this one thing. Yeah, we're we are in that bathroom until it's finished, no matter what. Um, and so our previous customers will will attest to that. And so I think it, it's it's two ways. You got to do your due diligence as a customer looking at reviews, websites, social media posts, looking at everything that they've done. What are other people saying about them? Take their word for it, but also ask the question, like, how do I know you're coming back? Yeah. I mean, all that's so important too, and especially the referral end of things and, and using, utilizing referrals. I've said this on the building end as well, you know, like the reviews are huge, obviously, uh, previous projects. That was a big one too. Like ask them, Hey, can I see some of your previous stuff? Not just pictures. Can I physically go somewhere or a project that you're, you're doing right now? A lot of people don't want to do the legwork, you know, because we're in a world now that, it's so fast. Everybody just wants it done and taken care of. The problem with that, though, is that you're not taking the time, like you said, to do that due diligence. And that's where you could run into an issue with somebody that is going to say, hey, you give me this deposit up front, and blah, blah, blah. And they're gone, you know, which which really leads you into another aspect of of gaining trust. If you have anybody in your house giving you an estimate who's not willing to take that time with you to reassure you, you should run away from that person. One of the, so right now I'm still doing all of our estimates, every single one of them I'm doing right now. Um, I'm working on training my dad and one other guy to do it. But one of the things I'm training is I have a folder on my phone with all of our previous projects. So when the customer says something very specific that I know we've done before, I'm like, Oh, hold on just a second. Let me, let me show you what we've done. That's very similar to that pull it up, boom, I show it to them on the spot. If they don't understand it, it takes more of my time. But guess what? That's an investment in trust from that customer. And I'm going to break it down because they don't understand the, the concept of the right thin set or the right grout, sanded or unsanded. What the heck does that mean? We break all that down for them in the estimation process, building that trust for them. And I think that alone allows the customer to say, okay, this guy's going to take time to explain this to me when I'm not paying him. We haven't signed anything with him. He's going to take the time to do this. Hopefully that builds trust with that customer. Yeah. Hang on one second. This guy with a leaf blower is literally right outside my window and it's driving me insane. Come on, buddy. <laughs> That, that kind of makes me feel good because uh, I've got my kids in the opposite end of the house right now. I'm like, daddy will come get you when it's time. <laughs> this is, yeah, he's moving his way around now. It was literally while you're talking, I'm like trying to listen to the audio on the computer. That's why I need headphones. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm like trying to keep my train of thought. All right, cool. We could roll it's now. Hard. I, think he's, yeah. I think he's gone too. Um yeah, that's all. I, I, I love that too. Cause the more detail you can give, obviously the better too. And I'm big on that as well it's, it's like, a lot of builders don't give enough. A lot of contractors don't give enough and what you're doing up front to, you know, provide that estimate and provide exact detail to it. I do that with our company as well as like, I give them like a five page, six page 
detailed out estimate and spell out literally mm -hmm. everything before they sign on the dotted line. And then I preach <laughs> that to people too. I go, you're going to know exactly what you're going to get. Uh, you know, if we're operating at a cost plus margins too, I'm still going to show you everything. Some of it might be estimated because I don't know what you're going to select, but I'm going to estimate high to make sure that you're at least covered or coming close at that certain point. So it's so important, even on a fixed cost or whatever, just the detail matters. And what you're doing is huge too, because there's not a lot of handyman services that are going to give that much detail. They're just going to say, well, what's your needs? What do you need me to do? Okay. Yeah. It'll probably be around this much, blah, blah, blah. And then they'll go ahead in and try and do it. And hopefully they finish it and then they're out. Uh, and that, that hurts me so much. I, I mean, that happens in this area, especially, and not trying to make fun of them, but in East Tennessee right now, Jimmy, John, Billy, Bob, they got their pickup truck and they're going around and trying to fix a bunch of stuff. And that's what, that's how it is. Yeah. We could probably do that for around, yeah. you know, 200 bucks. Listen, I think that's another thing to look for. If you want a quality handyman and you want a quality service, even if it's just an hour long job, something as simple as what I did the other day of putting in a thermostat, you need, you need a bit written out. What can you expect from that handyman and what does he expect from you? So that's what, that's what we do. I have it all in the system. I have Mark Kate for my CRM estimation software, every customer gets what they can expect from us, exactly what we're going to do and then what we expect of them as well. Um, and I think for the customer, especially whether you're a GC, realtor, inspector, or just a homeowner, if you don't see it, so if you don't have the contract or even if you do have a contract, but you don't see something that you expect, it is on you to ask the question, hey, I don't see this on here. Would you mind putting it on there? Mm -hmm. That's just a, that's just another level of expectation and trust. It's huge. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're listing out everything too, which kind of goes into my next question for you too. Like, so if somebody is hiring you, how should they expect pricing to look like, what is that? What is the outline they should be looking for in a handyman? Mm -hmm. Because you are right. There are so many just contractors in general that'll say, yeah, you know, I can, I can fix that for you for, uh, probably around this much, uh, if you want me to, and then it's, they end up trying to charge them more, or get more money and there's nothing really detailed out. So how should somebody look into pricing? How do you price? Uh, what should they look for in that element? Yeah. So for our handyman jobs, the, you know, the eight hours or less, what we, what the way that we structure is we have an hourly rate that the customer hears up front. And what we do is say, so for this job, I list out that scope of work. We estimate that it will take in between three and four hours, which means you will end up paying this to this plus our materials and here's what your materials will cost. Um, and it's, and it's pretty straightforward. Our contract says that, Hey, this is an estimation. And, uh, another way we're trying to build trust with our customers is if we misestimate on how long it will take us, we're not asking them for more money. We're just going to eat that and we got to get better at it. Mm -hmm. Um, if it's something where we are, let's say we're putting in a new toilet and you pull the toilet off and the whole flange is rotten out around the sides, then obviously that's in our, our contract that, Hey, we're going to have to do more work to do this the right way. We're going to fix this before we put a toilet back on it and yeah. we'll be responsible for that. Um, I think upfront pricing is, is pretty, um, it is important to a certain extent. Um, I am not going to tell you what each of my guys make. I, I think that's inappropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will give you a budget. I will tell you what we charge hourly. And even on that, I think it's easy for homeowners to judge pricing based upon what makes sense in their head. Um, and I would say if it sounds expensive, you're probably in the right range. If you're like, Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's really good. You might want to question it just a little bit because they, there's things that are in that price that you're just not thinking about. You're just, you're paying for the time of the person working. You're paying for the tools that we've invested in. There are, there's marketing, there's insurance, there's bonds, there's workman's comp, there's taxes. You've got all these things that we've got to divide out over all of our jobs called overhead. And you're looking for that. So 
our handyman is an hourly rate. It's all, that's all up front. We do, here's our hourly rate plus materials. We don't mark up materials. It's one for one. We hand them the receipt and say, here's reimburse us for this. Um, and that's, that's how we price it. It's all up front. They sign on it. They agree before we even start the job for bathrooms. Uh, we calculate the time that we will estimate it will take us to, to complete that. Uh, then we calculate the materials and our quotes are only good for two weeks right now because the materials are, yeah. you, you, you know, as well as I oh, do, yeah. they're up and down. <laughs> so any material quote we say is only good for about two weeks and then we have to requote it. But um, again, in bathrooms, we don't mark up the materials. They have a list. They can purchase it themselves or we'll purchase it for reimbursement. If we have to pick it up, obviously there's a delivery fee. We can't just use our gas for that. And then our hours of what it will take to, to, to do that. And then we mark that up uh, by 50, by 1.5 right now. And that that's good for us. That's covering our overhead. We're not trying to be millionaires right now. We just want to grow our business, take care of our customers and, and continue on. Um, and so all of our stuff is really upfront and people ask all the time, well, can you break this down line by line? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Here you go. And that, that's another part of that trust process. I love that because you don't really typically think about that. And that's the, for the listener too, that's how important hiring an actual professional service is as far as a handyman, not just hiring the neighbor down the street that knows how to fix stuff for 200 bucks mm -hmm. or, um, because you're, you're certified in what you do and that, and you're qualified in what you do. I mean, so that kind of, kind of gets into my next thing qualifications of a handyman what should people look for as far as qualifications because that's so important too because you even mentioned you know they joe's driving down the street with his pickup truck and has some tools in the back and says he can fix something but then again it breaks later on you know and yeah. falls apart so what qualifications should they be looking for yeah, and that i think it goes back to budget and and pricing and what you what you what are you looking for if you're looking for uh a account of i'll call it accountability if you want accountability to a good job uh, a job that's going to last then you're going to, have to pay a little bit more so let, let's go from low end if, if you don't if you don't have the budget and you don't really care then call joe schmo you can ask your friends on facebook or go to craigslist and you're going to find somebody who says they can do it and they're going to be the cheapest option for you if you want accountability you're going to have to go on google you're going to have to ask friends for referrals um, you're going to have to look for it. And in that the qualifications can be multiple. So for in the handyman realm, there's two different things. You don't technically have to have a license to do things for well, in Tennessee. We'll say in Tennessee right now, you don't have to have a license for $3,000 and under in the handyman realm, obviously with electrical and plumbing, you want a licensed professional to do that. We have licensed plumbers and, um, and I actually have a licensed electrician on staff. Uh, we have a licensed plumber that we use on a regular basis, and he works for one other guy, but mostly for us. Um, but anything $3,000 and under, there's not a lot of licensing, but you want, you, I would recommend having somebody who has insurance. So mm -hmm. that, that's liability insurance, uh, a, a bond, and then also a workman's comp. In Tennessee, again, it's very lenient. I think it's it's not until five employees, I think, that you're required to have workman's comp. We have four. We still have workman's comp. That's not just protecting the customer. That's me taking care of my guys as well. Um, those are some qualifications. If it's a bigger bathroom or uh, just a bigger job, $3,000 and over, there is a home improvement license. So people ask for, are you licensed and insured? Well, if it's under $3,000, most guys probably are not going to be licensed. The home improvement license, however, takes you up to $25,000 or $24,999. I think that's technical. Um, and in that, that licensing, you actually have to have references to your experience in doing those particular jobs. So if somebody has a home improvement license, that's a really good sign because it's, I, I, I've heard some guys say it's harder to get the home improvement license mm -hmm. than the GC license. So <laughs> Um, so yeah, that, I, I think you, you look at their qualifications and then obviously I would never, ever consider anyone without pictures of previous work or good reviews though. I think those are two of the bigger, most important things you can get past some of the other stuff, especially if your budget won't allow you to get a 
licensed, bonded, workman's comp, insured, all this stuff, at least at the very least, please make sure they've got pictures of previous work and good reviews that look legit. Yeah. I, I mean, that is the biggest one too, because without reviews and actual proof of work too, it's just a, a lot, uh, everything else is irrelevant, but mm -hmm. obviously the qualifications, like you said, matter too, because there's so many instances where they're just people hire somebody that doesn't have the qualifications. Mm -hmm. They just drive a pickup truck and that's almost as bad as just hiring that new builder, you know, because he's the cheapest and mm -hmm. says he's, he can, he's done remodels, but he knows he can build a house and it just turns out to be a mess. Cause, yeah. and, I, and I see that a lot too, especially with like owner builders and stuff like that. You can tell they don't know what they're doing and things are just a mess. We're building next door to a house, a other builder right now. And it's just been, the biggest mess I've ever seen. I, I've never seen a house construct, especially in my area with how much goes into these houses as well. And then, you know, we caught some of their guys trying to steal our electric and water. And then we, we yelled at them. Really? So they plugged into the neighbor's house next door and the neighbor was home and she came out and was like, what the heck? And so then they were taking water from another builder down the street and they were taking buckets across because they didn't have their plumbing hooked up prior it was the biggest mess and then the cops got called and it's just there's a lot of people out there for you that are listening just be careful do your research as much as possible as much yeah. as possible <laughs> oh yeah and those those are the guys too like if you always get mo get multiple quotes do your due diligence but if you see one that is significantly less than the other ones yeah that one should go in the trash because Red that's flag. That's exactly the quality that you're going to get. And I, I would say even more so too in the, I can't speak to the GC realm. I'm, I'm just not in that right now. Um, in the handyman realm, I think there's some, like we said, reviews, previous pictures, very, very important, maybe the most important thing. And then be patient with some guys. Uh, I know for me, the first few months, uh, we, there, we couldn't afford to be licensed, insured, bonded, Workman's con all that stuff with just me and dad. That's a lot of extra overhead that when you're working with two guys getting started, no investment, like, like what in the world? And so you just, you got to take jobs that you know that you can do well and ensure yourself. But the big thing is ask questions, do your due diligence and go with it. Well, what you just said too, is you knew you were in a situation where you couldn't do certain things and certain mm -hmm. jobs, but you had enough respect not to just jump the gun and do that stuff. There's too many people that are not qualified to do these certain jobs that just go ahead and do it because they're, they want the money. That's all that's in their mind is I can make good money, you know, and it's not the customer first. And so what you just said too, is so customer first driven because you actually care, you have a conscience. And I speak on that all the time, as far as having a conscience with customers and doing the right thing too, you know, because when I sell us, I have to sell us different, you know, obviously we're super custom, no home we build is the same, but I can't really do if I could, <clears throat> could do a fixed cost, but I, we choose not to because of how custom we are. It's almost impossible because every house, when I, the amount of Pinterest pictures and stuff that we get, to, oh, <laughs> the table, oh, yeah. you know, it's just, it's, it's hard for us to do. So I have to really on a cost plus, I really have to sell myself big time and, and know the things to say to earn that trust from the customer because everybody with cost plus, they think it's an open checkbook, but it's not if you trust your builder and your builders there to guide you. And we've been in business a long time to where we have that reputation of guiding people, helping them save money. I just saved a customer. I, I went to the meeting on door selections and I just saved them $49,000 on, on, on door. Yeah. And I said, Hey, John, I could save you 49 grand. Why do you need shutters here? You know, why do you need to do that? And he's like, good question, Bill. Why do I, I'm asking you. And I go, you don't. You know, I could have easily said, oh, yeah, let's get it. Let's upcharge it, this and that. But that's not who I am. We want them to be happy. And if he can take that 49000 and put it somewhere else or keep it in his pocket, that's I'm fine with it. You know, mm -hmm. we're going to make money. He He's going to be happy. And that's why we're in. We're going to build him a really nice house. So it's just everybody's happy. Everybody wins. Absolutely. Customer focus every time. I think that, I mean, it. 
I, I, th I think there are bad businesses that do succeed and end up doing well. But I think the majority, especially in our realm, if you do what's right, care for the customer, yeah. you're, you're going to, you're going to do well. Um, and we're proving that even in the handyman world, we've been in business since last June. Um, and in our short time being in business, uh, we've spent a little over a hundred dollars in marketing. That's it. And most of that was for Christmas lights to let everybody know that we put Christmas lights on everything else. That's our customers and they're referring us to other people. They see our trucks, they see our signs, that kind of stuff. Other than that, it's referral sense because we care for the customer first. Yeah. And when you do that, like you said, it's just going to keep your business going and driving and the referrals are going to come uh -huh. and, and people are just going to have a lot more respect for you too. I mean, I take calls all the time from past customers that with warranties expired and I hook, I set them up. You know, I had a guy 10 from 10 years ago that called me with an issue uh, that we mm -hmm. built for, but I have that relationship for mm -hmm. him or with him. And it's a friendship. And I said, Hey, let me get a hold of this guy that I know. I know he can take care of you and maybe lead you somewhere else to another guy. That's good. Mm -hmm. Cause I built that trust with our subcontractors and other people that have been around me in my life. And I've grown up with that are doing certain things that mm -hmm. I trust. And it's just that trust of everybody that you gain that trust, you're going to continue to climb the ladder in your business and it's going to continue to grow simple, plain and simple. Yeah. And it's, and it's all mindset for you as the owner and the business leader. Um, that's what I love. I st I'm stealing this from Mike Claudio. Uh, one of his core values is operate with the help first mentality. Mm -hmm. And obviously you can't, I mean, we, we can't just go into somebody's bathroom and just do it all for free. We can't operate in that way. But one of the ways that we, we are doing that is when somebody calls that has an issue that we can't take care of. I have a list of guys, like you said, that I trust that I can refer them to. So a lady called the other day, it froze here. Her water pipe burst on her house side of the main. So it wasn't on the street side, it was on her house side and she wanted us to come in, fix it. And I was like, that's, that's honestly not us, but my guy, Andrew, I got you. Let me, let me get you set up with him. He ended up going out there that day helped the lady, didn't charge her. But now guess what? She feels like she just called a family member who had the right mm -hmm. contact and helped her out. So if, when she does have a job that she needs, guess who she's going to call? She's mm -hmm. going to call Sanders and Sons. Yep, exactly. And let's touch on that a little bit too, like calling a family member, obviously working within the family business too, mm -hmm. has its pros, has its cons. Obviously I work in a family business, but it's just our group is very tight mm -hmm. as a family um you know i have my sister doing our billing my brother and i are running the business my dad's pretty much semi-retired now and uh i have one of my best friends that are doing uh our superintendent he's our superintendent and my fiance is doing our selections so talk about tight niche family yeah. you know it's just yeah let's talk about that a little bit how 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 is it with you how's the family business atmosphere obviously a lot of people like working with a family business because they come from them themselves too which i've noticed as well but you just know you're going to get really good treatment from everybody because everybody i feel like is on such the same page not all mm -hmm. the time we have our our disagreements you know mm -hmm. it's not all Brady Bunch, hunky dory in there, you know, but yep. uh, how do you, how are you dealing with it? How are you feeling about it? Yeah, I actually had several people who, uh, when I was getting ready to start Sanders and Sons, they were like, uh, be careful doing yeah, anything with that family too. members. <laughs> That's stuff. I'm a, I'm a straightforward kind of guy. So if uh, I feel it, you'll probably see it on my face. And um, so even with dad, with my brother, who's working for me, I told him, like, listen, this is business. It's got our all of our last names on it, but it's business. So if you're not consistently doing the right thing, doing the right job, I'm going to have to let you go. And it's not personal. I don't want it to affect our relationship, but just know all of our names are on this. I'm going to hold you to a high standard. So I set that expectation from the very beginning. Like, it's not going to be personal. I don't hate you, but I do have a business to run. And if we don't hold expectations and accountability, it's going to be really hard to carry on. So that was the first thing I did when they, when they came in, other than that, man, owning a family business for us is awesome. People in East Tennessee do value that. They do feel like they get a, an extra measure of trust 
and value in having family own. And then we get it all the time. My family and I, we're weird. We have a better relationship than most people. Everybody talks about Thanksgiving and Christmas and arguments and dreading it. Uh, not us. We take a, every two years, we all go to Disney together and, and we're at each, I'm at, we're all at my parents' house every single Sunday afternoon for, for meals. And we get along great customers comment all the time. Like I've never seen a dad and sons get along like this. This is weird because we're, we're just joking around and that's our goal. That's one of our purposes is we want it to feel like your favorite cousin or grandson came into your house and took care of things for you. And we're, it's one of our sayings we want to create family all over the tri-cities area family owned we're going to have employees that are not sanders but i am vetting those people like you wouldn't believe they are sitting down with me face to face making sure we get along and we can joke and have fun and enjoy each other while we're working but then you can also hold accountability that's one of our core values is accept accountability like if you do something wrong, we're going to address it. We're going to figure out how to get better. Yeah, I, I love that too. And then kind of having that family relationship with your clients too, and treating them like family, we're in the same boat, hundred percent. Like obviously with being in the family business too, like we've had our arguments here and there, but we do all get along very well. And with the employee thing, I'm the same way. If we're bringing you in, you got to be able to mesh with the group, especially since we're all so tight now and everybody, Mm -hmm. because when everybody's on the same page, things get done better. When you got that one person that doesn't mesh with you. And that's why it's so hard hiring now, you know, and it's it, it, cause I, maybe, maybe I'm so picky or whatever. I'm trying to hire an office girl now, another girl to help in the office. And I'm just going through them and I'm really vetting them and trying to find that person that's going to fit well with, you know, my sister and my fiance, because they're in there all the time and going to be able to work well with them. Because if this person doesn't work well with them, it's not going to be good because guess who's going to have to deal with Mm -hmm. it. And then I just hired a labor. And and so, I mean, he's awesome talking to him on the phone. He's all pumped up. He's ready. He knows he's starting at a bottom position, but he's all for it because he knows he can work his way up. Plus, he knows we're all younger and he wants to be like, you know, it's just going to be, I can feel it's going to be the right fit. It took forever to find this guy, but it just, it happened. It finally, you know, and we finally got somebody starting on Monday, but I get where you're coming from is just having that environment helps with the customers too, because the customers feel that energy too. And it goes into them and that energy, they become family. Like our customers, Mm -hmm are turning into friends. We're going to dinner with them. We're hanging out with them. Like I golfed with one of them the other day, mm-hmm. uh, just, uh, at a tournament cause he invited me and my brother-in-law and it's just building those relationships with your customers and not a lot of contractors do that. It's just, mm-hmm. Hey, we're done with your job onto the next. And that's not the way I want to be. We're, we're talking about customer events this year and having, you know, dinners and parties for them and starting to implement that more as well, because these people are building big projects. They're spending a lot of money. It's important to have them in your lives continuously mm-hmm. uh, throughout forever too, especially, yep. uh, you know, I'm in, we do their home watch real estate. It's just, there's a lot of different things to keep stay involved stay top of mind and keep the relationship yeah and uh, basically what you're doing is you're saying thank you a lot of contractors need to learn those those words Mm -hmm. thank you yeah like the customers always if you do a good job they're going to say thank you for so much for doing this no no you you turn around back no thank you you trusted me with your project you trusted me with your house and you're ultimately helping keep us in business. I greatly appreciate you. We do that all the time. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I want to get into personal questions because we're getting a little short on time here. Um, yeah. Uh, but before I do, I always like asking, and especially people in your position, yeah, uh, in your field, what is some, what is the craziest project you've had to work on so far? You know, like the, just one, <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot here, no, it's, but it's, uh, it's, it's more of like, which one do I want to talk yeah. about <laughs> in here? Um, I mean, we've been in business a, a short time. Let's see. I Honestly, I think the craziest one was I did, I, I went outside of my bounds of what I normally do. Mm-hmm. Uh, we actually had somebody in our neighborhood Facebook group 
messaged me and said, Hey, I noticed my floor around my shower is it's, it's moving. And I think there's rot. Can you fix that? And I said, yeah, I can fix that. And, uh, (laughs) I went, I told her a price and I said, yeah, I'll do it for this much. I'll come, I'll come do it. So I went myself, which is rare. And I pulled, uh, it was, it was, it was nasty. It was really bad. And, uh, I pulled it up and I was like, it's not, it's, it's not just your shower floor. It's your entire floor. Everything was just rot. It was water damage. It was rot. So she decided to end up doing the whole bathroom and whoever had redone the bathroom before she um, purchased the house, uh, they should have done some more research. Like they, it was, it was the, it was not tile, but it was linoleum on part on particle board. There was no caulking around the shower at all in any in any area. The exhaust fan was barely hanging on, and the hot wires were literally sat like this with just a little bit of electrical tape around them, and it was just sitting uh, sitting in the insulation. <laughs> oh my gosh! I just every every part of that, I just kept going. Oh, what have we done? <laughs> so personally, that's probably the craziest one that I've I've actually got into. Yeah, that's uh, that. That was probably fun. Fun repair. <laughs> Maybe we fixed it right, but it was uh, every aspect of it. It was just another face palm every time. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I definitely feel you on that one. Yeah, especially with the mold. I can only imagine the mold and everything that was involved in that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is when you walk out of the house, slumped over, and you're like, "Oh my gosh, what am I dealing with?" Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Let's uh let's go into some personal questions to wrap this up. I always ask this question to everybody. What about you personally? What lessons have you learned throughout your journey that we should all apply to our own lives, our own business that can help us grow? Yeah. Um uh gosh, there's so many of those. Uh one, I think budget. Uh you you got to budget correctly. That's personal life, that's business life. Um oftentimes you just get into doing your business and you look at the bank account and you're like, Oh, that looks good. That was good. Mm-hmm. You, you gotta have a budget. You have to know every cent of overhead, what's going out, what's coming in your payroll, your taxes. Um, you got to pay attention to what's going on. In fact, we were using QuickBooks and got in a really bad situation because QuickBooks was doing something funky with subcontractor expenses and classifying it as cost of goods sold. So we got this massive sales tax bill from uh-huh. the state of Tennessee and you know, if I was operating like some of these guys out there who are really good at what they do, but they don't pay attention to that stuff, man, we would have been, we've been done for. So a budget and knowing all, knowing everything that's going on behind the scenes, it's going to take extra time. But that right there, I'd say is maybe one of the number one killers of guys in the trades. There's no budget. You've got to have a budget. The other thing, and I'm learning this more here recently, um, especially working with Mike and Winrate Consulting, is you need a mentor, a business mentor. It cannot be a friend. It cannot be a family member. You need mm-hmm. someone on the outside who can objectively look into your business and see your blind spots. That is, I mean, you need that personally. I, yeah. I have a personal mentor with who occasionally we'll talk about business, but most of the time it's we talk about me and my blind spots and then you can have a coach or business mentor that's looking at your business. I think those are two major misses a lot, especially in the contracting world because it's easy for us to say, I'm the expert. I know what's going on. This is my business and everything we do is emotional. We need that objective uh, look in there. And, um, you know, so many people say the, the quote, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Mm-hmm. that really is is pushing towards that mentorship and having somebody objectively look in and say hey i don't think you're seeing this right now you should look into this i 1000 percent agree with you on that one as far as you know having somebody from the outside looking in too i just started with doing that as well and it's been it opens your eyes. You don't really see a lot of what you go through and so on in business and in life until you have that person that kind of can be objective, not a friend, not a family member, but somebody different that can look at a situation of ex- at what is exactly happening and give you that different perspective on it. 
and it's been helping me quite a bit, which I never thought about doing it until recently. And it's been a hundred percent worth every penny. So invest in yourself. Absolutely. I agree with you a hundred percent on that. Um, most people ask about your past. Let's talk about your future. Where will we see Josh in the future? Let's say 10, 15, 20 years from now. Yeah. Well, uh, our 10 year goal for sure with Sanders and sons, we'll set, we'll start there. Sanders and sons is, is we want to be the premier, the go-to handyman in the tri cities. And literally in the next 10 years, we have zero plans to expand out of Johnson city, Kingsport, Bristol, um, because there, uh, the need is just massive. We can't handle it right now. Uh, so we want to be the premier handyman, the go-to guys for that. Um, personally, I want to be a resource and a coach for other tradesmen, just trying to get started in it. And, um, I'm even reaching out to local high schools here now because there needs to be some push in high schools for entrepreneurship, uh, going into the trades and educating kids about what you can do. Mm -hmm. Um, and so five, 10 years from now, man, I, I, want to be a voice for people getting started in entrepreneurship and into business. Um, and then also, you know, I'm, I'm hoping this, uh, kind of blows up is I'm writing a book right now about willpower, even in finding myself and who I am and starting a business. I was like, where do you find this willpower and motivation and purpose? And I've been on this journey to find that. And I want to bring people along with me on that journey to, to, to help them out. Because when you're starting a business, you, you've got the greatest highs, and some stupid low lows and it applies in personal life, marriage, fitness, business. And so I'm going to book an, a, a podcast about willpower and hopefully that blows up and helps a lot of people. And so, you know, five, 10 years, hopefully you see me continuing to, to build people up, encourage people. Um, and you'll know the name of Sanders and sons, not just from a podcast, but you've heard of them before. No doubt. Yeah, I got no doubt after having you on today, man. So love that answer. Um, I always like asking this question too. Is there something on this pod on this episode that we didn't cover uh, that you think we should have that'll give the audience value? I mean, I think uh, just uh, you you go both ways. Let's go from a client perspective or or a customer perspective. We hit on it, but again, I just reiterate do your due diligence. Don't just go into trying to find somebody to do your job that get the first quote, whatever you want to try to do, and then argue with that price and go back and forth. Do your due diligence, search Google, look at the reviews, talk to the person that you're getting the estimate from work through that. So you are well-educated and, um, and, and that also makes their job easier. And then from the contractor side, I really have a heart for these guys. There's a lot of good skilled guys out there that are going to fail because they don't pay attention to budgets and doing things the right way or the business side of things for contractors, handymen, whatever, reach out to someone for help. Even if that's just looking for the right resources on how to get started, do it and do it well, because ultimately if you spend that time and you invest the time in doing it and doing it well and reaching out for help, it helps us all be better and gain just a little bit more trust every time we, we serve a customer. Yeah, no, I love that. That's important too. Cause I mean, the more you ask for help man, the better you're going to be. And people are afraid to ask for help. That's the problem there. They're just, nobody ever wants to, they just think they can tackle it themselves. But I think I've learned the older I've gotten to, I've learned more and more and the more help I've asked for the better I've become too. It's just get to drop your ego plain and simple. Yeah. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength and what you're about to do. When you ask for help, things are about to get real. It's awesome. Love it. Boom. Uh, what last question, what this show's all about, what exactly do people need to look for when hiring a handyman service and why should they choose Josh Sanders and Sanders and sons as their handyman of choice? Yeah. So you all, <laughs> again, go back to look for the pictures, look for previous work, look at reviews. Um, you, you've got to do that due diligence there and then, and ask questions. And ultimately you're going to end up you would choose Sanders and Sons because we're going to have all those things for you. We're going to be completely upfront and honest. We're going to look professional and we're going to treat you like family and so well that you're going to want to share that with your family and friends as well. 
you may pay a little bit more for it, but ultimately we're going to be lifelong friends, family, and uh, we'll take care of you. Love it, man. This is Josh. This has been awesome. Uh, I mean, a lot of great details. Like I said, I was excited to have you on because this was a topic I really wanted to touch on in the building industry because I get asked this question all the time. It was a good handyman. And you guys are very important into in the building world and the contracting world and that our space. So I really appreciate your time today. Real quick, where can people find and connect with you? Yeah. Uh, so on the handyman side, you can check out our website. It's Sanders and Sons Handyman dot com. You can also look at uh, our Instagram, Facebook page, which is just Sanders and Sons Handyman. Personally, all my all my social feeds are Josh Sanders four two three. Awesome, brother. I appreciate your time today. This is this is great. Great, great show to have you on. A lot of great information. Hopefully, everybody took some value out of this. I have no doubt they did. So, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, man. Loved it. Awesome. Thanks, guys, for listening. I will see you all on the next one.